Hey, hey guys. So in this video, we're going to run through how to get more people to sign up to your email list. We're going to run through this and we're going to run through exactly how to set up a sign up form and a multi step sign up form and then also how to optimize that sign up form to make sure you get the most people signing up to your list. So let's dive in. So in this call, we're going to run through what is a sign up form, uh, different ways to use a sign up form, different purposes of a sign up form how to build out the sign up form, how to build out a multi step sign up form, how to get more people to sign up to your email list. Um, and we're going to kind of dive through all of that. We're going to show you exactly how to do that in Clavio as well. So what is a sign up form? Sign up forms are used on your website to collect information about your users. Typically, they're either embedded at the bottom of the page, or they're added as a pop up. You've definitely seen these before on any website you go to or most websites you might go to. So how are these actually used? Number one, it's to grow your email list or SMS list. And number two, it would be to obtain zero and first party data from your customers. This can be really helpful if you've got a lot of different products or if you've got men's and women's products, you can help to differentiate and collect information so that people are actually getting the products and things that they're actually interested in. Uh, and then three would be just a specific sale. If you're doing a Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale, you might want to have a specific pop up just for that. Or if you're doing a flash sale that you only do, you know, two times a year, you might want to have a specific pop up just for that as well. So how do you actually create a sign up form? So I'm going to jump into Clavio now share my screen here. So the first thing you want to do is navigate to sign up forms. This is just a dummy account. Um, but basically navigate to sign up forms here, go to create sign up form. And then you have a couple options here. Number one, you can build it from scratch, or you can go ahead and select one of these. Uh, and these are just basically templates, you can see it's a multi step email, um, an SMS sign up form, um, futuristic one, this is just kind of a basic one. Uh, I'm just going to go with this one for the purposes of this video. And then what you want to do is you just want to name it. So what I'm going to name this is our test account is Ulu bags. And we're going to call this new subscribers just so we know what sign up form this is for, right? You might have multiple as you continue to grow and scale. When you start, you might just have like two or three or maybe even just one, right? Um, now you choose the list here, right? So we're gonna choose newsletter. That's the kind of main one that we're using. Uh, and then SMS list, we're gonna use the same thing here. So newsletter as well. And we're gonna go ahead and create the form here. And what you're going to see is it's actually going to, it's going to kind of come like prepackaged, right? Now, the couple of things that you're going to want to note is at the very top here, you can see the different steps, right? So you can see the email opt-in, you can see the SMS opt-in, uh, and then you can see the kind of success message. You can also add another step if you want. Um, I'm going to go through how to kind of like optimize a multi-step form as well, just in a second. But um, yeah, let's dive into actually creating it. So the first thing you're going to be able to do is go in and choose the styles. Right. So uh, again, like what I mentioned, you can have a pop up, a full page, a fly out, an embed. Um, now, a pop up is typically going to look like this. It's going to pop up on the website. A uh, full page is going to take up the entire page. A fly out is just going to come in from the side or the, you know, the top or the bottom. Um, and then an embed is typically somewhere on the page. Oftentimes, you'll see it at the bottom of the page where it's like sign up for email newsletter now. Right. So um, we're going to do a pop up for the purposes of this video. Uh, you can kind of play with the width as well. Um, what I would recommend doing is make one for mobile and make one for desktop, because if you're, uh, for example, if you're opening up this on desktop, it'll look fine. But if you open it up on mobile, it might not look all that great. Right. It might be a little too small. Text might be too small. Um, what you want to do is test out a mobile and a desktop version. Um, see, like that's kind of kind of lame. Um, make sure that you are optimizing and testing um, for mobile and for desktop. Uh, you can go ahead and change the colors here. That's pretty self explanatory. Any drop shadow you want to add um, form styles, etc. Um, and again, there's a lot of customization you can do with the colors. So that's kind of the initial style piece of things. Now you can go in here. And once you there we go. Um, once you determine, hey, all right, that's the style I want to use. Actually, I'll just go back and show you how to navigate there. You can either click on this, which is really great, uh, or you can go back um, and then you go to add blocks. So this is where you can add multiple different blocks. Uh, and each block is just going to be a slightly different thing, right? You might have text, you might have a button. Um, any one of these you can kind of select. What we like to do um, for like a single step sign up form is just email right? You can do email, you can do first name if you want as well. Um, but 
one thing to note is especially as you continue to add more questions, the more questions you add, the more friction that adds to a consumer, right? So if you're asking like their name, their email, their phone number, their birthday, their like mother's maiden name, like this is starting to get a little aggressive. And it's like, are you trying to hack me right now? Um, so it's really important to just kind of keep it simple. You can always ask more later on or you can have a multi-step form like this. So um, you can have a multi-step form where you have like an email opt-in and then you can see the second page here is an SMS opt-in. So building out a multi-step form is relatively simple on that front. Um, you just, you know, you can add another step if you really want and you could say, okay, I want um, profile information. This could be, again, kind of what I mentioned at the beginning there is this could be information about their preferences, right? Like what are they interested in? What products do they like? That type of thing. Um, now, what I would recommend you could if if SMS is something you're looking to grow, you can add it in and I would add it in like this. Um, just because the more you add on this page, the more friction you're going to get, the less people are going to get opting in. Right now, let's get people to opt into the email first. And then once they've opted into the email, then ask them for the SMS. Right. I've seen some some brands do like email and SMS on the same page might be okay for them. But again, we're looking to make sure we're optimizing this conversion rate and making sure that your opt-in rate is as high as it possibly can be because that fe feeds into everything else, feeds into flows, feeds into campaigns, etc. Now, diving in here a little bit more, you can go ahead and you can edit the text here to whatever you want to say. Um, you can go ahead here and again, like edit the text here, you can add a new block. So if you do want to add a little bit more information or if you want to collect a little bit more information, um, just give me a sec. This is uber slow. There we go. So let's say I want um, for one of our clients, we recently did this, right? So we have uh, email, but we also they sell a lot of men's products and a lot of women's products as well. And we don't really want to display men's products to women and women's products to men. Um, or we want to give people an option if they do want to receive that, right? So what I go in and do is go text. And this is going to be a little funky with the formatting. I just got to, I'll have to move that a little bit. There we go. So you might just have to like drag and drop that. Uh, come on. There we go. A little slow. Um, and then let's say what we wanted to collect was three, like just one piece of information more. Like what are your preferences, right? So you, we go in here, show you how to create this multi-step form as well. Um, what we did is just a radio button. Right, so we did a radio button here. There we go. We want it to load in. There we go. And then what we liked is, and this is just kind of like more of a personal preference. We like the uh, option um, to have it more horizontal versus vertical. So it just adds the the questions there. Um, you would then go in here. I'll create another kind of like longer video on how to add these custom labels. Um, but you would say like mail. Or you, you know, you could say men's, women's, geez, this is really laggy, both. And you go in here, you would select the value. Um, and what you need to do, if you don't have that value already, you can create the value right here. So you would just go men, and then you can actually create, create men right, create that new uh, property and create that new value. So um, that's what you would do there if you want to add a multi step form. Now going back a little bit, once you've done that, once you're like, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do. This is this the steps I want to have. Um, again, you can just go in edit this, make sure this button is correct. It should be because at the very beginning, you decided, hey, this is the list I want to add to. So make sure it's adding to the correct list here. Um, you can just go in and check here, right? Check the action. Okay. When this, when the form is submitted, um, it's added to the newsletter, um, et cetera. So the only other piece here that you want to make sure you're editing is the targeting and behaviors. So if you go in here, click on targeting and behaviors. So then what you want to do is just review these and make sure you have them set up uh, for what's really proper for your brand. Um, don't show again. I, I would say like, leave it for five days. Um, you can always test this as well. Show based on rules. This is really important. So run through here. And as soon as this loads, 
So I would make sure these are edited as well. So you don't want it to show immediately. You want it to show um, usually about half the time that the average person spends on the site. So if you, the average person spends 40 seconds on your website, you want it to show after 20 seconds after page load. Um, and you can say show after scrolling about 50% of the page or 70% of the page. Again, this is another one of those things that you can test. Um, scrolling down a little bit further here, again, set this to your personal preference here. You don't want to be too aggressive. And then finally here, make sure you're targeting people who don't already have an existing Klaviyo profile. Um, you don't want to show to all visitors because if someone's already got the welcome code, they don't want to see it again. If someone hasn't seen the welcome code, they don't want to, um, and, and they've already purchased, they might be like, oh, well, I want to get that 10% off or I want to get this this offer, right? So um, make sure that is um, that is dialed there too. And then if you do have stores in multiple locations, you can also edit that here too. So yeah, that should, uh, that should pretty much summarize this. I'm just going to pause this for half a second. Okay, so the last piece here is optimizing the signup form. So this is really, really important. And this is how we test and optimize and get some signup forms from 1% to all the way up to like seven, eight, nine, 10%, right? Now, the key thing here is to test the highest leverage item first, which is the offer, right? If someone looks and sees, hey, we got 10% off versus $10 off, what works better? Um, if we've got a free gift with purchase, maybe that's an option. Maybe that's an offer that we can use. Um, or maybe there's a percentage off your first subscription, that type of thing. It's really important to test this out and see which offer performs the best because at the end of the day, you don't know exactly what's going to resonate best with the consumer, right? You can base this off of data, but at the end of the day, every customer group is different, right? So testing this is really, really important. Once you've tested this out, testing the copy, testing the creative is very important as well. And a, a key thing here, uh, test radically different things, right? Like don't test like, you know, 8% off versus 9% off, right? I don't know many people who would do that, but, um, don't uh, the other the other thing too is like where we found our best success is testing like a an image of a person like for example an image of a person sipping a tea versus a tea mug right radically different things right one has a person's face in it one is just literally a tea mug um let's test this out let's see what works better and again what we found works best is testing radically different things um and the last thing here is just testing timing so uh, what should your goals actually be here, right? You should ideally be shooting for a 5% minimum opt-in rate, right? If you've got a 1% opt-in rate or a 2% opt-in rate, that's very low. Um, so ideally we should be shooting for a 5% minimum and realistically more in the six to 10%. Uh, and I can't spell minimum uh, by the looks of it. So I hope this helped you. I hope you got some value from this video. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help. And yeah, thanks for watching.